hi everyone and welcome back to my channel here we are again with another tutorial for x-ray workers and today we are going to talk about scaphoid x-rays procedure technique and technical considerations so the scaphoid is pretty important for the stability and movement of our wrist it's actually the biggest bone in the proximal row of carpal bones and uh, it plays a crucial role in forming the uh, radial portion of the carpal tunnel that's uh, the tunnel through which nerves and tendons pass in our wrist around 70 to 80 of all carpal bones fractures are scaphoid fractures while they can happen at any age they tend to affect adolescents and young adults the most and the reason behind it is that the scaphoid bone is uh, only start to develop after the age 8 or 9. So, one common way that the scaphoid can get injured is through a fall onto an outstretched hand, uh, also known as fush. It's a pretty common mechanism for traumatic disruptions in the wrist bones and ligaments okay then let's jump into the uh, radiography technique of the scaphoid bone so the scaphoid x-rays are highly requested from the emergency departments uh, but as my experience most of the physician and doctors will not mention the scaphoid view on the request and they may just order wrist x-ray pa and lateral so I highly suggest you, the x-ray workers, the radiographers, to take a brief history from the patient. So if you know that the patient has a history of falling down, especially that uh, fall onto an outstretched hand that we talked about in the previous slide. So you may know that the scaphoid uh, injury is likely. And uh, through that, you will implement the specialized technique and procedure to evaluate the scaphoid bone. So the two standard projections for the scaphoid studies is the PA view with the hand flexed towards the ulna bone and the lateral view. The two additional projections are oblique view and the PA angle, which um, somehow the PA axial view which uh, might be helpful to evaluate the scaphoid injuries. And remember, the scaphoid fractures are likely not to be seen in the normal PA and lateral projection. So implementing the specialized technique uh, will help the physician to ruling out any injury and fracture in the scaphoid bone. So let's talk about these projections one by one. So the first one is the PA uh, with the hand flexed toward the ulna bone. So this ulnar deviation is actually to remove the scaphoid uh, from the radius and uh, present its uh, longest axis. So you see these two x-ray, uh, same patient. This is a PA view and this is a PA with ulnar deviation. And you see how good the fracture can be seen here also in the PA view it's you can see it here but uh, this is the best view to illustrate the scaphoid fracture and also uh, to uh, inspect the joint space of the carpal bones and the distal radio ulnar joint right here so the x-ray should be centered at the anatomical stuff box, which is easy to find. The exposure factor 50 to 60 kilo voltage and milliamp per second of 3 to 5. And remember, uh, take a short SID of around 100 centimeter. And let's move on to the second view, which is a true lateral x-ray. And uh, of course, uh, most of the x-ray workers know how to do a lateral wrist x-ray. The exposure factor is almost the same as a PA and uh, the central ray is the mid-carpal region. 
But here uh, we're going to talk about the true lateral X-ray that how we can say one lateral wrist X-ray is actually a true um, academic lateral. Okay, so a true lateral wrist is defined by the relationship of these three bones: capitate, scaphoid, and the pisiform. And um, so academically. If we draw a line on the anterior surface of the pisiform and draw another imaginary line at the anterior surface of capitate and one again at the anterior surface of a scaphoid. So this blue line should lie between anywhere between these two red lines. Of course, the best condition is exactly at the center, but anywhere between these two lines are acceptable. Let's show it on a real x-rays. So these two x-rays are taken from one patient, both same patient. Uh, so I see many of the radiology technologies will tell this is a true lateral x-ray as the all line radius are completely superimposed compared to this one but uh, let's implement what we learned uh, from the previous slide so if we uh, draw a line this is the scaphoid bone here this is the capitate and this yellow one is the PZ form so one line at the anterior surface of PZ form, one scaphoid. Let me change it to another color. And one line here at the anterior surface of capitate. You see this yellow line is lie between these two blue lines. So this is an acceptable lateral wrist X-ray. But let's check the other one, the right one. This is the PZ form. This one is the scaphoid bone and this is the capitate. So if again we draw the lines anterior surface of PZ form, scaphoid and the capitate. You see this yellow line is outside of uh, between these two blue lines. So this is not unacceptable lateral wrist x-ray and this is not a true lateral and you can see also this in these illustrations here uh, these three images are acceptable as you see the PZ form lies between the capitate and the uh, scaphoid bone but this one which is the same as this x-ray the PZ form uh, actually, the hand is rotated medially, so it's not a true lateral. And this one is rotated externally. The hand is rotated outward. So these are not acceptable lateral wrist x-rays. Okay, let's move on to the next projection, which is the oblique view. That is a great projection to assess the tubercle of a scaphoid. So it's a 40 degree oblique view. Uh, let's see these two x-rays of the same patient with fracture of the scaphoid tubercle. You can easily notice here on the oblique view, but in the PA view, it's hard to see the fracture line. Let me show you this on this 3D modeling. I highlighted the scaphoid bone and this is the anterior posterior view the tubercle of a scaphoid is actually behind this structure and if we turn it to the lateral view it will superimpose with the other structures but 40 degree oblique view we can clearly see this tubercle okay and finally, the 
PA axial view, which is quite similar to the uh, the first projection that we talked about, the PA view. The only difference is 50 to 30 degree angulation toward the elbow, as you can see here in this picture. So this angle will remove the scaphoid superimposition from uh, the radius and the other carpal bones. And remember, too much angle will only distort the scaphoid via superimposition. And don't forget the ulnar deviation, which is necessary as it moves the scaphoid away from the uh, radius and it's rotated in the palmar aspect. And this is the best view to see the whole length of the scaphoid view. All right, that's it. Uh, that's the end of this video. Thank you for tuning in this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and explore the other radiography tutorials available to enhance your radiography skills.